Thank you for having me um, and coming out and to, to listen. Uh, it's an honor to be here to celebrate 25 years of KX. Um, my KX journey started, it was about 10 years ago. Um, there was a small group of us in Ottawa uh, who were sort of exiled to the wilderness of consulting after having left a previous uh, product company. Uh, and we decided that we needed to preserve our sanity and get back to building products. Uh, and so we were kicking ideas around the table and we said, you know, data is the cheese, the data volumes are getting larger, we need an environment where we can uh, immersively live, let developers and analysts live in their data, visualize it, uh, tumble it, <clears throat> um, and find, find insights from it. Uh, so we said, great, that's the plan, let's go build it. And we found that everything sucked. Every technology we looked at just didn't do it, didn't cut it. Um, so we started to despair, and then the penny dropped, and it was like, right, Simon, Arthur, they've got something cool. It sounds a bit weird, uh, but let's take it for a spin. Um, and about 18 months after we had that initial conversation and Simon flew to Ottawa to, uh, to give us some training, uh, we delivered the first version of a product uh, to a cyber customer. So an anal analyst initially was uh, designed to be sort of an ad hoc generic, uh, data um, environment, uh, and it remains that, but the original use case uh, was for the cyber domain, uh, and that's an area that we're expanding into and building out additional capabilities, uh, more traditional capabilities, which I'll, uh, cyber capabilities, which I'll talk about. Uh, so a quick overview, I've done my introduction. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the cyber landscape. I think many of you are, are familiar with it. Um, a brief overview of KX for Cyber, and then what I'd really like to focus on is how we're applying KDB uh, to some of these challenges. Um, I think some of, the, some of the applications are obvious, but I'd like to focus on maybe that are a bit more novel or, or sort of off the beaten path, uh, and do that from both the perspective of our customers uh, as well as us internally since we're heavy users of it to build KX for Cyber itself. Uh, so quickly, uh, you know, I won't do the show of hands. Everyone's heard about some sort of cyber-related thing, particularly in the last little while. Um, the attacks are increasing in number. Uh, they're getting much more complicated, harder to detect, uh, and then harder to identify if you've been compromised. Um, you know, if I say the names Equifax or Target, uh, WannaCry, these all resonate, I'm sure, with many of you. So it's becoming increasingly uh, a larger issue uh, for individuals and, and, and particular enterprises. Um, Current estimates are it takes about three to five million dollars to clean up after a compromise. Obviously that will vary if you're targeted or Equifax, I'm sure that number is much larger. Uh, so it's getting quite expensive. And this is to say nothing of damage to reputation. Um, I would hazard a guess that about five years ago, if you were doing, um, if you were a business, many would say, you know what, we're going to defer the cost, we can deal with it, we probably won't get hit, and if we do, we'll clean it up after. I think we've reached a tipping point, and that's no longer the case, and businesses are proactively looking to defend themselves against cyber threats. And that's borne out by a lot of market research. I think the current estimates are somewhere around 80 to 100 billion for this year, and that's going to more than double um, in two to three years. I said they're getting more uh, sophisticated. Uh, it's up to 100 days now is the current estimate to even figure out you've been compromised. Uh, so obviously a lot can happen in that 100 days. A lot of data can be exfiltrated. A lot of damage can be done. So there need to be techniques that allow us to analyze the data and look for patterns so that we can uncover them more quickly. Obviously KDB Plus, KDB Plus lends itself very well to this. Uh, 60 days to remediate. Uh, so you've, all, you've, you've spent your 100 days figuring out that you've been compromised. It's now an additional 60 days to actually clean up the mess and get back online. Uh, cyber startups were the number one venture funded uh, category uh, for the first quarter of 2018 uh, in North America. I think that number also, also holds for Europe. Um, and so the, uh, the sort of the, the land rush, which is sort of akin to what happened for big data about five, six years ago and what's happening for AI right now, cyber is one of these buzzwords and indeed incorporates a lot of big data and AI uh, capabilities within it. Um, and like uh, all sort of STEM related fields, uh, there is a huge skill shortage projected for cyber. There already is one, and that's project projected to grow to 2021, uh, to uh, three and a half million jobs uh, by 2021. So uh, obviously there's a lot of different jobs uh, that can, job titles that can be encompassed in that. Uh, I'm going to sort of focus on SecOps, DevOps, uh, so the, the provisioning and monitoring end of it. Uh, data analysts and developers and what we're trying to do to enable them. Uh, since we can't hire enough people to fill the roles, we need to make sure that we make them more productive. So what about cyber data? I'm going to say that everyone's looking at this slide saying, okay, what's new? 
Uh, we all know about this stuff. There's, there's nothing really new going on here. Uh, I think the difference with cyber uh, and a few other domains is that you're doing with all the things all the time. Uh, typically, in most cases, we're seeing people deal with subsets of these or all of these but in different time slices. Or in the cyber domain, we're seeing all these types of data come in uh, constantly. Uh, I guess the one thing I'd highlight in addition to that is the data is highly variable. It's not a case where you um, do your planning up front and say, I've got three or four well-known <coughs> defined data formats and schemas. This is what we're playing with forevermore. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. New data formats are coming in all the time. It can be something just to email text. It can become new structured data formats, unstructured. Uh, and you need to be able to, to get these parsed and ingested so that you can enrich your other uh, data very quickly. Uh, so that's a significant challenge uh, within cyber. Uh, there's also uh, becoming more and more uh, emphasis on uh, relationship and graph data, uh, particularly around network routing and that type of thing. Uh, BGP hijacking was recently in the news. Uh, that's become uh, increasingly an issue. Uh, there was a, a, someone BGP hijacked the Amazon AWS DNS uh, IP ranges so they could do some uh, uh, crypto, uh, crypto jacking. I'll talk about edge to cloud a little bit uh, as well. Um, so quickly, KX for cyber. I mentioned the analyst heritage, which is really focused on analysts and developers. Uh, we're also incorporating in the offering now uh, the traditional SIEM capabilities, which is reporting, alerting, monitoring, uh, dashboarding, ingest, all that type of thing, which is important from a security operations center or network operations center perspective uh, that you have to have in, to, in addition to be doing the, uh, the, the detailed analysis. Uh, but it still comes to pass that when you get some of these alerts, uh, you need an analyst to actually go and validate that you actually are under attack and that it's not a false positive. So you still need an immersive data environment uh, where you can do this type of work, query, visualize, enrich, all at real time. And again, that's where KDB Plus really shines, uh, the ability to do that. Um, so the dashboarding, alerting, reporting really caters to the SecOps, DevOps use case. Um, the analyst tool really cater, uh, caters to um, developers and analysts. Um, so we view developers as a force multiplier for analysts. Uh, typical domain analysts don't want to be bogged down having to learn necessarily SQL or other programming languages. They'd like to just use tools that are familiar to them and give them the affordances they need. Um, so for developers, we provide developer level tooling. And then for analysts, we provide things like uh, drag and drop ETL, spreadsheets, that type of thing, uh, where you know, QSQL is a scripting language in the spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet's a metaphor they, they're familiar with and they're more willing to undertake, uh, to undertake the exploration. And all these tools operate in the same runtime, so anything that a developer does is immediately available to the analyst and vice versa. Analysts can make stuff available to developers. Uh, one really interesting example is all the drag and drop workflow, ETL workflows actually compile down to Q functions. So an analyst can actually build uh, uh, an ETL transform and make it available to the larger team even though they actually didn't program any QSQL or any filters to do the work. So I'm going to dovetail now to sort of uh, cu customer uh, experience with KDB Plus uh, and uh, as well as our own. So I'll sort of act as a proxy. There's a couple great quotes from one of our customers there. I won't read them. Uh, you'll have lots of time to read them there. Um, but I wanted to focus on speed. Uh, and we all think when we hear KDB Plus, we're talking raw execution speed, scalability. Uh, I want to talk about sort of time to analytic, uh, and that's something that's really resonated with our customers. Often in cyber, you've got a very narrow window with, uh, within which to make a decision, and oftentimes you're asking questions that you haven't asked before. Um, so in many cases, analysts are conditioned to only ask a very small set of questions because they know they're time constrained and they, they need to get at least some answers quickly. Um, what KDB Plus has allowed them to do is open up uh, the, uh, no, the possibilities because they're getting uh, uh, replies to their queries much faster. Uh, the other thing is they're failing much faster, which might sound a bit backward, but some of these systems, it can take hours and even days to get back the fact that the queries failed. Uh, whereas we're typically doing that in seconds and minutes, again, they can move on and ask a different question, uh, giving them a much better uh, chance to unlock, uh, unlock insights. Again, that makes them more productive uh, and helps cater to the fact that there's a, a small supply of them. Uh, integration has been another massive, massive win for us. Uh, many systems have difficult and cumbersome integration models. Um, you know, use the best, uh, build the rest. Used to be buy the best, build the rest, but in an open source world, increasingly we're taking uh, the best offerings that are out there. 
Uh, we don't want to re reinvent the wheel, uh, particularly in cyber. Uh, Python has become sort of the de facto standard as it has in other data science areas. Um, a lot of the new uh, network analysis stuff is being done in Python. Um, so we've been le leveraging uh, a lot of the Fusion Initiative, Embed Pi, uh, to support that as well. Customers also have existing tradecraft that they have in legacy languages. Uh, they don't want to rewrite that in QSQL. Again, the recent improvements in Fusion uh, have been a huge boon to us uh, to allow us to support uh, this new polyglot environment, uh, which, you know, to be fair, isn't unique to cyber. I think that's going to be true uh, across all verticals uh, if it isn't already. Edge to cloud, uh, this is somewhere we're again quite unique. Uh, I, Leslie and Shemek are here and they've got a KX for sensors uh, area set up in the, in the far room, uh, so they can speak to this as well. Um, the small footprint of KDB Plus makes it very attractive to put it in non-standard areas. So um, there's two reasons we need to do this. One is bandwidth. Oftentimes you have devices which are only on online intermittently or have limited bandwidth to send back data. So that means we need to push the analytic to the edge. Uh, another issue is locality of action. Sometimes there isn't enough time at these remote areas to upload the query back to a central data center and be able to get the answer back to take action. So you need some sort of capability of processing power at the edge. And the fact that you can take KDB Plus, the same runtime, the same queue script, run it against your petabyte data store, data warehouse, and then push that exact same query down to an edge, small edge device in a wiring closet is a huge competitive advantage for us and something that's really resonated. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about sort of uh, using KDB Plus to build KX for Cyber in, in terms of KX for Cyber. So when we started out that eight, ten years ago, the initial notion, I will admit, I'll be honest, confess my sins, uh, was that we'll use KDB Plus for the data side of things, we'll build everything else with, you know, Java, God help me, or, you know, some other, some other standard language. And we started out doing that, and to be honest, the first version, that's exactly what we did. We just use KDB Plus for data. Uh, but then we said, why are we doing this? As we got more familiar with it, as we used it more and more and more, we said, look, it's as general purpose of programming language as, any, as anyone out there. Does it solve all problems? No. Again, I think polyglot approach is the right approach. Use the right tool for the right job. But we quickly found out that KDB Plus was, in fact, the right tool for most jobs. Um, so KX for Cyber, it was right now about 90,000 lines of, of Q. Uh, you know, I'm sure the purists are recoiling. My God, that's far too many, right? But uh, it does it does a lot in those 90,000 lines. Uh, by comparison, if you take uh, all the other programming languages we're using, KDB Plus is doing, you know, arguably 70 to 80 percent of the work. Uh, there's a million lines of code of C, C++, um, and JS. Um, so we're doing 80 percent of the work in less than 10 percent of the code. So uh, the win is still there. Um, so I'll touch on a couple areas, uh, and uh, Tim Thornton and Ben Jeffrey, who both, both work with me in Ottawa, Tim did uh, a lot of stuff around uh, language parsing uh, and visualization. Ben's done a lot of the work on NLP. They're here and they can get into the, the nitty gritty uh, with you for anyone who wants to get into details. But uh, one of the things we found that it was really easy to start building, uh, that Tim built uh, parser combinators uh, in Q. And this let us build DSLs for uh, custom languages really quickly. So I mentioned before this, this varied data issue where you're getting new data formats, new data streams. Those need to be parsed and converted into a representation then we can join with the rest of the system. And that's been huge for us. Um, one example is STIX. It's a thread exchange uh, uh, specification. And of course, like all good specifications, it had to specify its own format for everything. Uh, so rather than use an existing uh, uh, pattern language, they came up with their own. Um, we were able to, in about 20 to 30 lines of queue, in about half an hour, generate a STIX prototype uh, query uh, parsing engine because we had that DSL infrastructure already built in, in KDB+. Um, something else we've done, I mentioned graph as being increasingly important. That's a BGP hijack detection uh, uh, graph that's being shown there. Uh, we've built a complete graph database implementation sitting on top of KDB+, and that's about 2,200 lines of queue to implement the database. 
Uh, and then on top of that, about 300 lines of queue to implement Cypher. Uh, if anyone here is familiar with graph databases, Cypher is a language now being used for Neo4j, which is one of the, the top, they and Titan are probably the top two graph, commercial graph databases out there. So again, you, if you, uh, the goal here is that if you have an existing set of knowledge in a domain, we don't want to force you to have to forget that and relearn it. We want you to bring, be able to bring it over to Cyber and leverage what you already have without forcing, shoehorning you into to doing something else. Uh, reducing uh, the impedance. Uh, so lastly, uh, so that, that's building, that's using KDB Plus to build features of the product itself. Uh, but we actually have to build the thing from the ground up to begin with. Uh, and again, uh, we looked at using other approaches and, you know, we didn't write our own build server, we used Jenkins, you could probably write a better one, but uh, why bother? Uh, but we did build all this tooling again in Q and KDB Plus. Uh, so that's a call stack analysis uh, of a bunch of uh, grammar of graphics visuals calls uh, using data from the profiler. Uh, ben wrote a coverage, test coverage tool uh, that uh, takes the results from uh, both Cucumber, which is a BDD framework like Jasmine or uh, Cucumber from Ruby. Uh, Quick Check, which any of uh, you Haskell fans will be familiar with, a property-based testing framework. Uh, and then a linter as well to do uh, save time linting of, uh, of analytics so we can try and catch uh, errors uh, and programming style uh, violations, if you will, uh, much quicker. And of course, all these things generate tables, all these tables get put in, in, into an HDB, and then we have a dashboard, so that means we can go over time, look at our development history, see where we're, we're uh, uh, making mistakes, see where we're making improvements. Uh, Cucumber, for instance, has a bench clause as well, so it's part of your unit testing, you can actually bench how each function's doing, and then over time you can report on, on uh, trends uh, with things. So. Um, you know, that's a very quick tour of uh, sort of cyber in general and how we're applying KDB Plus to it. Uh, again, thanks very much. It's always great to come back to New York. Uh, it's a great community, really passionate, and uh, you know, I always learn, uh, learn something new when I'm talking with you people, so look forward to talking with you after. Thank you. Thank you.